Hi everybody, this is Erica Slayton here with Wallach and Volk Mortgage. The SlaytonLendingGroup.com is my website and of course I'll have my contact information down below the video. I'm coming to you today to bring you a little bit of information about buying a home and being self-employed during our current state of affairs in 2020. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up some guidelines for you so that I can make sure I have them handy and referencing them correctly. So first of all, everybody knows that when you're self-employed, it is a challenge. It's hard. You're depending on yourself. You're depending on your marketing efforts. Um, you know, do you have enough time in the day for everything that you have to do? Because when you're self-employed, you are so many hats, right? So your sales and customer service and your management and everything else and being self-employed, has its challenges when there are market changes and economic conditions that are strained. And of course there could be some impacts, right? To being self-employed and having some sort of major economic adverse event, such as what we're experiencing right now. It's really unfortunate that so many businesses are currently being impacted, but many of them are small businesses. And of course the government recognizes this. That being said, you have situations where people who are self-employed want loans too, to be able to buy homes or refinance their home loan in order to save money. And unfortunately there are, because of all of the economic downturns and experiences that we're going through right now, there is a little bit of question upon stability of income and continuance of income. And so of course the problem is right now is that we're having as lenders to document the heck out of stuff in order to prove the stability of the income and the uh, continuance of the income. And so I kind of wanted to just share with you some of the guidelines that we're currently having to go through because I feel like clients are frustrated in some sense uh, based on the documentation that's being requested. And I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page, whether you're a prospective buyer, prospective want to refinance your house, a real estate agent, or one of the realtor or one of the, uh, referral partners, or even one of your related industries within the lending business to where everybody's on the same page because we're all in this together. I know you guys hear that all the time, but we are, and this is a federal mandate, meaning that we all have to abide by these same rules. So um, during the pandemic, continuing impact on business throughout the whole wide, you know, whole country, and not just Texas, uh, we're now required to obtain the following additional documentation in order to support the decision that the income meets the guidelines for a self-employed person. So the first thing that we would get is an audited year-to-date profit and loss statement. That is what is reporting the business revenue, uh, your sales, uh, what expenses do you have, and then what's left over, your net income. Okay, and it has to be through the most recent month preceding the loan application date. Well, here's, here's one of the big things I wanna share with you on this audited profit and loss statements are highly expensive. They take a lot of time. This one requirement, I can tell you right now, most of my clients are not going for. So there is an or, or I like to say a but clause. <laughs> so the or is an unaudited year-to-date profit and loss statement that's signed by the borrower that shows you revenue, sales, and expenses, of course, and then whatever your net income is, up to and including the most recent month preceding the loan application date and two business deposit statements. So in other words, if you have a May 31st uh, profit and loss, for example, then I need to have April and May bank statements. And that just kind of, you know, corroborates what the profit and loss is showing that the information that's showing on those April and May bank statements will corroborate the income that is showing on that May 31st year to date profit and loss statement. The, the key here is they cannot be any older than 60 days as of the note date. So it, it's very challenging because if we start on a loan sometimes and you give us say um, April bank statements and it's June, we still have to have updates. And if you're closing in July, most likely we're still gonna need updates. So I, I hope that everybody understands that we're not sitting here asking for documentation because we love asking for documentation. It's because we have to abide by the age of documentation requirements, how old the docs are, right? So, you know, I had a loan this morning, for example, where the client gave me January and February bank statements. It does me no good. January and February is like seriously ancient history. So a couple of things just to kind of think in, and, and think in terms of how an underwriter thinks and how the government thinks right now when it comes to being self-employed 
and getting a home loan. How has your business operation been affected or has it been maintained or modified to support your continued income that you have coming in? So for example, um, I'd love to see some of these things that people have done in the restaurant business where they have modified the eat in, dine in restaurant uh, consumers. And now what they're doing is they have these awesome packages where you're, uh, you know, you drive up at noon and then there's your dinner package waiting for you with maybe a gallon of milk or, you know, when we have the toilet paper craze, which seems like it's coming back, um, maybe a couple rolls of toilet paper within that, that dinner package. And that's a really cool way to modify the support of your continued business income, right? So what have you done? So if we see like a dip in income, maybe we just need to dig deeper and figure out what have you done to modify and come out of that small hole that you've dug for yourself because of the type of business that you work. And hopefully it's not a big hole. The other thing is like, uh, are you operating in different location? For example, uh, we, we have a person that we know that's a coffee shop owner. Um, they brought their coffee shop out to the curb. Why? Because there was no drive through. So, you know, brought that espresso machine and a cart out to the curb. Uh, we had a bicycle that uh, she, you know, enlisted the help of, a, of a, one of her baristas and they were delivering with the bicycle, um, added things like Uber Eats and things like that to the ability to be able to deliver those coffee products out to the consumer. That's an example of modifying to be able to continue to support your business. The other thing, of course, is, is there demand for the product or service that is currently being offered by your business? Uh, for example, you know, are you a business that is uh, cleaning buildings, for example? You know, our our office building uh, janitorial service slowed down. Why? Because we didn't need their services. Well, now we're, you know, ramping back up again soon and we'll need the services again. But unfortunately, during that timeline, we have to explain why, if you own a janitorial service, why your sales dipped, but then you're coming out of it. And we have to be able to see that. That's probably the most important part is explaining. We have to be able to see that coming back. Um, the other thing is, uh, for example, if you were a salon owner back when in San Antonio, you were not allowed to open back up again. Um, you know, there's a valid reason why you didn't have any sales coming in during those few months because you weren't allowed to have consumers coming in. That's a very valid explanation. So that would go along with why you saw your sales dip down. And then again, you're coming back out of it. And of course, the other thing is, is the business operations impact negligible because of the nature of their business? For example, if you own a grocery store, you are just raking in the dough right now. Why? Because you have a lot of people coming into you on a regular basis. They're not going out to eat as much. They're buying at the grocery store instead, that kind of thing. So that's a negligible impact. And actually, it just looks better for your bottom line. So I think it's really important for people to understand that when we're looking at the numbers on a year to date basis, we're having to really closely analyze it. So we as lenders have to take way more time up front and do a really, really bang up job to make sure that we can really analyze what's happening with your business, ask a lot of questions and make sure that that stability and the continued income is going to stay. Making sure that your documents are up to date, making sure that they're not over 60 days old, and they're there just the very, very most current, most recent statements you have available. So please don't take it as we're trying to, um, you know, keep coming back to you for more and more and more data, but we have to, we have to make sure that the age of the documents are accurate, the most current, and that the income that we have to use to support the payment that you're making on your bills and your new house payment is supported with the income that we see on those documentations. So if in doubt, reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any of your questions and make it a great one. Thanks for watching.